Hello, in this episode of Bug Bounty Reports Explained, I will show you an amazing out of the box hacking technique that could lead to compromising anyone who uses homebrew casks to install stuff on macOS or Linux. The vulnerability was found by Ryotak. Link to his blog post is in the description. Enjoy! Homebrew is a package manager for macOS, something like apt for Linux. To install a cask, you run this command. Cask was originally an independent brew extension, but now it's quite integrated with the tool. At the moment, there are almost 4000 casks. Each is defined by a file which looks like this and is stored in the official homebrew repository on GitHub. Among other properties, there was version of the cask and its checksum. You can imagine that managing manually updates of 4000 casks is a very time consuming job. So homebrew team automated it using GitHub actions. It's a platform integrated with GitHub for handling things like running tests or deploying your code. In homebrew, there was a script that automatically merged the pull request if it only changed the version and the checksum of the cask. Let's consider an attack scenario where we would like to inject our code into a cask configuration file. Although it's mostly used for storing static information, it's still a Ruby file, so injecting code here would lead to an RCE on the machine of anyone who installs the cask. But before that, your pull request had to go through multiple checks. Some of the requirements like modifying only one file or not moving, creating or deleting files are easy to meet and we will not focus on them here. Two rules that are most relevant for us are that count of added and deleted lines must be the same and all changed lines must match these regexes. So only versions and checksums could be changed. At this point, you might be thinking that it's yet another bug that originates from an incomplete regex, but it's not. It's much more interesting. Instead, it's another case where security of millions of users rely on a relatively small repository that it will do what it's supposed to do. Because to know what were the changes in the files, GitHub action script used this git div repository. Because you can run git div command, but it only returns text. And to know if the pull request should be auto merged or not, you must know exactly what was inside the commits. Git div is a Ruby library that parses the text from git div command and returns concrete information about how many files were changed, what were those files and what were those changes and so on. The hunter decided to try to hide malicious changes from this git div script. It takes the input from git div command and it's using text parsing and regexes to extract information. This is an example git div after changing one line in a file. Importantly, even though the file was still in the same location, git div prints those file names with a slash or b slash prepended to differentiate between versions of the file. So git div library first parsed this first line, it also checked if any files were added or deleted and so on and so on. There were quite a lot of regexes like this. But for us, the interesting part starts here. If it starts with three plus signs followed by b slash file path, it means that the following changes added lines to this file. If it starts with three minuses followed by a slash file path, it means those lines were deleted from this file. Then there is information about those lines and then there are contents of the file. If the line is not prepended by anything, it means it's unchanged. If there is a minus, it means it was deleted. And if there was a plus, it means it was added. Now let's see what happens when I make this change, where I add a line that starts with two plus signs. 
it was an added line. So in git div, one plus sign is prepended before this line. It looks like this, and we can see by the color that it was added to the file. However, git div Ruby library did not work on colors. It only saw the raw text input. So when seeing this output, it didn't consider it an added line, but instead it matched this regex. So git div thought it's an information that some lines were added to this file. But since there are no lines that were actually changed, so no lines prepended by a single minus or a single plus, it detects zero file changes. This gives you the ability to add almost arbitrary lines to Ruby files in the official homebrew repository. Almost arbitrary because there were still a few problems. First, line in the file must start with a double plus sign. What does it mean in Ruby? Not much actually. Plus and minus before a variable act as just a sign of a number. So if you have a positive number, putting a minus in front of it will make it negative. But putting a plus to minuses or to pluses will not affect it. Importantly, it will not throw an error even if the expression is a string. Another problem that you must solve is that the changed file must be inside casks folder. When git div library sees multiple lines, the next one overrides the previous one. So you can have anything you want in the first line as long as the second will match this regex, which will be a file inside casks folder. Unfortunately, it's still not the end. It's only half of the problems because due to another bug in git div, the line with the file name must not use quotes. When Ruby sees this code, it tries to evaluate variable b, variable casks, and then call the rb function on variable iterm2. To avoid exceptions of undefined objects here, the hunter defined all these in the previous line. This is the syntax in Ruby which you can use to embed Ruby code inside a string. And finally, the last problem that you have to solve is Rubocop, a static code analyzer and formatter. It didn't quite like the style of the injected code. It knows that exploits must be elegant. Although you could disable it in one line by adding a comment, you couldn't use that in the second line because then it was parsed as the part of the file name. What the hunter did was adding a third line in between with an if instruction and the comment. Then the next line was treated as the part of the if expression and Rubocop also ignored it. This is the final payload. With approval of the homebrew security team, the pull request was approved and the change was merged to item to cask, which is the second most popular. It actually worked too well because not only was this printed during the installation of this one cask, but also during the cleanup, so some users noticed that immediately. The change was quickly reverted and the bug was triaged. Homebrew only has a vulnerability disclosure program, so no bounty was awarded for this report. As for the fix, review and auto-merge actions are no longer in the repository. That's it for this video. If you are a member of BBRE Premium, check out the member platform, because soon I will publish hands-on labs and you will be able to practice this vulnerability yourself. If you'd like to subscribe, check out premium at bugboutingexplained.com. Anyway, if you've learned something new today, leave a like and recommend this video to someone who will also like this. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.